Hey, um, it's Monday. I'm gonna try to hold my phone steady today. Um, I'm Gogo Lerato, I'm Gogo Kandalembuwe. I am jittering and my voice is chilly. Oh, what a week. Um, but like I said, Mondays are always so busy. Um, and thank you guys so much for sharing my videos. Oh my goodness. Thank you guys so much. I much appreciate it. I got a lot of interesting questions. I've been reading them, um, just not answering because I've been busy with, uh, with readings and consultations. So, hi, Langkutla today voice like a chill. I've got a couple of things to also get out of admin, but okay. Out of passing. Lisa, you bong holy went at the Moholo Bamakubit, the Bamjali Babahat to Bahulu. Calimema bong holy went at the Molu, Calimema Cofella Manilu, who don't in the Zalfats. Calimema when I'm Rena Mudimu, Yabu Pilenzuli. Kelmema Luna, Gaufe, Labon, Hollywood, and Timon Hutons in its elephants. Kitsit Yama Vita, a match, Halla Hale, Kikotaka Rulu Hodimo, Kikopa, Pushale, Morena Mutimu Yar, Yabu Pilenzoli. Happy when I tabua. When I'm with the muddy tab and when I'm with the muamitsi. When I'm with the malefats, when I'm with the matuli. Lissidi Hanya, Togosan Tamako. So um, uh, hey, it's getting kind of really silly like a mona, and now Lina and I'm undoing myself. Hey, it looks cool, and I don't want to. Okay, so it looks hard. I'm only looking more on my clothing because uh, hey, I'm faster than silly. I can't. First things first. Um, I had an interesting reading this past week, and it was from a gogo whose brother. He went in into Bungoma. Brilliant guy. I got to talk to him and I got we got to speak. Um, but unfortunately, uh Umkulu has got an addiction to crystal meth. The family is destitute, um, and it's tough for all of them. And quite honestly, I said I am not an expert. Um I'd give it a bash. If niggas nabana, but I've got kids. So I'm asking to all of you, Okoko Nabumkulu, anybody who specializes with toxins and drug addictions and that type of thing, to help Umkulu out. Um, I'm going to just leave my, my number again. Please let me know. Um, it would be wonderful if you could get Umkulu to get some help. Um, yeah, so that's the one thing. It's been really in my heart for a while and Lampona Lenaish Kipanchi Zeman had a very interesting week. Um, okay, that's the first thing that I wanted to pass through. Second thing, I got a question that actually directed me towards the type of knowledge I'm giving, right? And I remember a few weeks back, I said, um, I got a very interesting question from Ukoko. So I'm going to just say it up here because this question of yours, Koko, is burning me. Um, I'm not going to teach about it today because I feel like it's a highly evolved question. But I, I do want you to know that um, it's a brilliant question, right? So Ukoko asked that, how does African spirituality, particularly Ubungoma, move us from the fourth into the fifth dimension of existence i believe that's what she was asking um third or fourth fifth dimension of spirituality um and i remember a couple of weeks back i said it's a highly evolved question um uh i can't answer it but i think we're not quite ready yet Gogo, to be able to answer that question um in a lot of background that we need to do. Secondly, I have seen, you know, a few posts, you know, a few comments 
I know, you know, it's just crazy. Blah, blah, blah. So I want you guys to know my teachings are not the gospel. My teachings are my experiences. Are what I have found out. Um, and in no way um, should my teachings, whether it's by virtue of language, because I know some people are having issues uh, and some people having issues um, let that barrier not be something that eliminates you from taking what you need right there's a lot of stuff that I that I pack into these teachings and the point is for each of us to be able to find a reflection of ourselves in these teachings for each of us to find a reflection of who God is in these teachings. Um, so I want you guys to remember that. Take what you need from it. What you don't need, throw away. Right? Um, God has made us liberal that way. And it is amazing that our creator uh, needs to find no validation with his work. Right. Mudimu doesn't require validation from either Bungaka or Christianity. Um, if God required any type of validation, God would not spend his time creating and putting everything in creation that is there. God has created all of this that is around us as spiritual gifts to us for us to decide who God is. So I'll start with the analogy of that I always use. We are differentiations of God. So when when God wanted to experience itself, God decided I will take myself, divide myself up into different components. Forget that I'm God. Have an experience on earth. Um, and this experience is the one that will bring me to remembering that I am God. So by virtue of us all being here, we are expressions of the amazing God. We are expressions of the divine God, right? Um, and that is also something that I wanted to take also to the Gogo, who's brother is on drugs sometimes the experiment or the experience of god on earth is not one that suits us i know um and a very simple example of that is how as people not only as africans as mankind on earth we have managed to bring towards each other horrific events in history and we continue to do that right so the world as we see it today is a direct result of each of us choosing to take the spirit of god and interpreting it in whichever way so the calamities that we have in this world are our fault basically and some of these things that are happening from slavery even, um, are lessons where God is making us aware of who we are. The reality of slavery is that it was there. Um, and although certain people did not partake in it directly, but their omission, their failure to speak out, um, was agreement. The reality is, as we all have phone, phones and whatnot, um, I actually wipe my phone first. Um, as we have phones, as we have dinner every night, and parts of Africa are still in struggle, parts of Africa are still divided and broken, this is, this is God showing to itself who God is. 
And we can choose to become the source that changes how we do things. However, majority of the time we, we feel that as a unit, we cannot because we do not realize that we are connected by one spirit. So we are like those animals, those insects with antennas that communicate telepathically. We don't realize that. And I'm finding that is one of the issues with, with the way that we experience and express Ubungoma and Ubu Prophet. We all walk in solitude. We all feel like no one can relate. Um, yet we don't realize um, that we, we are telecommunicating. So this would be answering uh, the, the girl who said to me after she saw my video, she started to prophesy in her sleep. This is the direct answer. As, as my message reaches you, it aligns with you. And a part of your spirit connects with what I'm saying. And a part of your spirit and a part of my spirit have come into agreement about the truths or the God that it chooses to experience. So what that union, that communion, that marriage in that moment through is tunya. What it does is, even when you sleep, the passive mind now, the conscious mind, sorry, the conscious mind, it is fast asleep, and that is where the true you and the true me can connect. So today, I said I was going to teach about churches and water spirits. I hope to do a closing on this, um, but... I'll be honest, I did a lot of research this week and it left me feeling so disheartened and almost heartbroken. However, I will present um, that with what I have learned through Badimu um, and I'll dish it up as it is. Um, so, last week we spoke about Mungamits, right? And the assumption or each prophet's assumption into a, a merry state. One thing that came to me over the week and that was so interesting was that Mary was a virgin. So it means penetration, infiltration of the spirit did not come from outside. Um, when she broke her virginity, that's when she gave birth to Christ. When a prophet finds the who am I, it is when the gift or the inner self breaks out from inside going out. And I often find that it's so interesting that prophets we, we use or we try to define who am I from external views. By the way, uh, Goko Mavis, look, I am so excited that you guys are watching from Botswana, Luko Lesotho. I've been saying that I want to thank you guys. Um, I want to thank you guys so much on your support. I am born, born, born to jump by defense right now. Right. So, Togo Zagoko, thank you so much. Um, so, Huila, going back to Dabaya Huila. Ruila is to assume a state of virginity. Ruila is to assume a state where spiritual contact, connection, where spiritual marriage contract is not coming from the external. And that is why Ruila, right? We are assuming a Virgin Mary state. Um, and obviously, most of us, we will dream of ourselves really pregnant. I spoke about this. Um, and by the way, uh, your pregnancy and what you're wearing in your dream, whether you're not only pregnant in the dream or it's 
the women that you're working with in the dream, I, I will do a teaching on dream interpretations and how to decipher them and why they work out the way that they do. I have said, Korundao spirits, Khangata, they are always symbolic of death, right? When you see death, your death, the death of another person, your grandmother's death, that is where now you are being shown great spiritual transformation. So, when I when I when I read about the churches or Batu, I said I'm going to teach about why certain churches can sort of summon Mungamizi out of the river, and why these churches Batu what thing they no longer go go no king. Um, I actually started to think about the beads first, and I thought to myself, and I realized how symbolic beads are of the bible and then i decided to google the trade in beads in africa so initially africans said the ostrich eggshells those were our beads um they were the earliest forms of beads that we used in africa uh, so this would be like your tent colors and whatnot right um however the the glass and plastic bead trade is seed is said to be coming from around the 1500s however well okay this is what google said but also google from different sources said actually not beads were coming from much earlier right the ostrich egg the ostrich egg beads that were found apparently in Cape Town, I didn't know this, um, was say, are said to be around 75,000 years old. So, it's one of the beads, the original beads. The rest of the beads came around 500 years ago. Um, these would be your color beads. And I was actually quite sad that most of them were coming from Europe. Um... Italy, uh, Netherlands, and they infiltrated Africa from the north of Africa. Back to Mesopotamia. It looks like Tutsinga that they started from there. Right. Um, but what happened was, um, this is what Google said, and I thought this was really sad. Beads became an exchange for slavery. Um, I think they call them slavery beads. Beads were initially given to probably the heads of state, royalty. And, well, royalty, naturally, they had, they had their own slaves, you know. Um, and with time, beads started to be exchanged for land. Um, and not just mirrors. Um, from around from from around Nigeria, funny enough, and Togo, Togo, and eventually, beads in their different colors um, started to infiltrate. So, beads actually became a currency that. I would say today, our white and mainly our Arabic and our spirits today would have exchanged for land. And that's where we got these colors from. Right? So they're over 500 years old. Right? And, you know, I was a bit disheartened because when I thought about it, I guess the beads came shortly before the Bible, right? Um, we, we could say the Bible mainly came to South Africa, couple 1652, right? Um, but I think it, it was, there was a time when I spoke about uh, um, the Bible in, in, in top of Africa it was around the 1600s. So beads actually arrived before the Bible. And it's so sad, not sad, interesting 
when I thought about the beads that we use to describe Bunga Kabarona and how they apply to the Bible. Um, it was a reading that I did about an hour ago that brought this knowledge to me. So the beads that we use mainly for Mdawa Kumitzing would be black and white. Some people say that's the Nguni spirit. right? But if you look at black and white and how they contrast each other completely, in the Bible you would be able to apply that as the Alpha and Omega. In Eastern mysticism, that would be yin and yang. Um, maybe also limo babbling is good and evil. Complete balance. Right? The red and the white beads, as I said, would be red symbolic of blood and white symbolic of water. Um, and both these elements are elements that are actually... Let's reduce these two elements to just the death of Jesus Christ on the cross. So it's almost like these beads, Gabuzoni, Tibuas a prophet. Jesu, before he got crucified, the Bible says he went got having a rapella, a fufulela. Next thing, Fufuza turns into blood, right? And then on top of that, um, now, when he is on the cross, it was daylight, the way that we believe today. But as soon as he died and he said, it's finished, that's what the Bible takes, or rather the interpretation of the Bible says things, right? So if you look at our beads, our primary beads as well, they've got a lot of biblical application. Because, because, um, who would be the equivalent of Satan in our African ancestral ways? I think there's only one God in the of the Yoruba or the Orishas that is meant to be the God of the crossroads. And he's said to be mischievous, not evil. Um, our African ways do not, do not consider evil. Um... Our African ways considered everything to be a mistake or misinterpretation. Evil was never a thing that was that could be perpetuated into an afterlife. Evil could was never the definition of who we call Satan or the devil could never have been a real figure in the Bible in, in the African context. Because if if you as a child was misbehaving, it was really as simple as having Baholo come and talk to you or make some type of intervention, right? So in a way, if you think about it, the definition of a devil from the African perspective, ki uh, anatem, and like, I don't know that word is coming from the Bible. And I just thought it was really um, sad, but also interesting that the beads that we put on today um, are also coming from from the West, right? Um, and I'm going to, I, I know I said, right? So if you think about it also, from the South African context, seeing that the Koi in the Sen, the Koi Koi in the Sen were the original inhabitants, the beads that the ostrich eggshells were probably originating, first used by them, right? Um, and to this day, by the way, uh, most Yadi Ngakata, my Koi Koi, Koi Sen, ostrich eggshell, um, because it was used as a way to preserve water. It was a way. It, it was a way used to preserve water because of the temperatures them only. So they would store water underground, get the ostrich eggshells. And I'm guessing, um, going into the Kalahari, into Kalahadi, into Botswana now. That's where the ostrich eggshell came into. 
I'm going to explain this at a much later stage because ostrich eggshell, it, it is pivotal for Dinyaka Tsupe, especially Tabatwana. Right. Especially Tabatwana. So, okay, I saw someone ask what, um, what do the color beads mean, right? I think I said this last week. I just know this. When I see color beads, this is somebody with mermaid spirits um, from Kolewad. Um And I, I, I just know it, right? Um, mermaid spirits, they come as color. Color will obviously would be taking up every shape or form. But again, if you really think about it, looking at the history of the beads, it would generally, literally mean that if it was a demon-made spirits or the spirit, marine spirits, they could take on any interpretation because we had Ma'arab, we had all sorts of nations bringing beads to us, right? And Hangata, the marine spirits, will choose to take some type of in interpretation, mostly Kasaporofeto, pulling in a, an Indian Dao spirit, mostly, or an Arabic one, and a white Dao spirit. Right. So I think that is why uh, uh or Abangoma, it's not seldom that they would have color beads. Right. Abangoma mostly lean towards the brown wooden beads. Right. Um, a friend of mine who is from Zim told me that they don't put on beads when they toss them. So that's that. Uh, Gogo Tato, I'm going to, I'm going to get to Tabayanga Katsupe. I hope I'll have time today. Right. Um, but you know, I left to start it from, from the beginning. So, color beads, Kitzel, Kitty Mermaid Spirits, I would say. Colorful, taking on any form. Right. Black and white, Alpha and Omega. Red and white, Mitzili Madi. All of these are biblical. And all of these are having one thing in common. They seem to be pulling some type of Ndao spirit some way, some way will be a white and down spirit, I believe. If not that, it will be is tunya, is tunya sisi because some do, right, because of the trade. And like I'm saying, I know it's a bit hectic what I'm saying, but I want you guys to just bear with me. So, what started to happen, because now, um, Bungaka. Barona. As I've spoken about when, when I spoke about prophecy and when I started, we started to go into churches. So Stunya stopped being only the white in our spirit, or rather Stunya Sisibuans, or let's call it that. Stunya started to be a combination of our different cultures and the same building. So Stunya started to be represented as the Holy Spirit. Right? Um, and I asked my husband today that, well, we, we've been speaking about it the whole weekend. Why? Because um, I had a reading last week where this particular Gogo was given a prophetic gift, but Yahweh um, Zadi only. And it really got me thinking. So I asked my husband, Hore, now, do you source the Zameetzi? Seeing that Munga Meetzi should actually be an embodiment of any type of water. Why is it that Dikerakitsi, let's say St. John, you don't really need to go looking for that to attend that church. Um, go postola, I know some they go. I mean, even Libo St. John, I'm sure some they go. Um, but not much. Go Zayone as well. Some go for Bona, their own edification, or our Pachamisa's prophet. Um, but not much. I mean, the reality is these churches are do and you would assume, or because Kidi Kereke founded on water spirits, um, or Dika Dika Kopanelo Komitzin, but a all of them are on dry land, seldom make an effort to go really and spend a lot of time kunuking. Um, Shembe as well. Shembe, believe it or not. They, they've got a very powerful prophetic water spirit. Um, so, why? I mean, I would assume if Kereke is founded on Badimu Bataba, 
let's say like ZCC, they believe for a mudima bone, a bone, a mutabinya sion. Right? Moria as well is expressed as taba. Right? And because of the, the yellow aspect of uniform yabone, they are correct. So why is it both 12 apostles, both St. John's, both Kai Kai, why is it that they are not able to do it? Because they are not able to do it. And it was one of the questions that I asked myself for a very long time. Until I got a very interesting insight. I would like to say from Idlo Zilam or Umni Gazi. I'm not quite sure. I don't spend a lot of time discerning or who's talking. The simple answer came like this. When we used to practice, when we used to practice Ubungoma, most of Abangoma, or rather most of the tribes that practice African ancestral healing, most of them, right? And and okay, so our ancestors, even when you look at the ancestral and our spirits, but Malawi with his Lake Malawi, but Zambiki, they're coming from there, right? Rhodesia or past Rhodesia, which is modern day Zimbabwe, has got one of the oldest forms. Of water healing, kuditabe, or on land, and those are the ba postori healers. Um, those are the people who dress in all white, right? Um, so this was, I believe, one of the oldest forms of doing that. Now the question becomes, why, why basai komitsi, or why do they not go to church there? The answer was simple. With the development of taps, the water from the rivers came Kamunklum. So this is again um, evidence. Is the modernization of Ubungoma. Period. People started to have taps. Silver taps. Golden taps. And well, and that's why some of us still dream of those, right? But there was no longer a need. If you guys remember my teaching here last week, that I almost feel like the spirit of Hosanna, the spirit of Hallelujah, what we call Hallelujah, what we call Hosanna, what we call Holy Spirit, is actually Mudimu Wakomitsin. It's actually God. It's actually the Holy Spirit. And I will even further explain this. Um, no, let me say it now quick. Right? That is why Motuhaya Kunuking Ailo Ailo Pahamisam Dawakwa Kumitsin or Mungamits. Or in English they call it baptism. Or in the well in the Bible they call it baptism. When you go for baptism, almost always. After some time, you start to have baloti spirits. Uh, these are, in mediumship language, they call them clear audience. Usimula ugra mudisebing. Noises, noises like the sea, uh, all sorts of noises. And even the Bible tables that out, because when Jesus Christ got baptized, there came a white bird. And Balotsi, by the way, I'm going to explain this one day, Balotsi will call them flying beings, the bird, the Holy Spirit in the Bible, again. So Jesus went, got baptized, again, apakamisa mdawakwa kometzing, mdawakwa kometzing or umnikaz, whichever way you want to see it, um, always attracts, most of the time, attracts a Balotsi at some point. So, what started to happen is that now people realize this. Now they could go 
call a uh, Hosanna drive Hosanna into our houses through the, the availability of water. But Hosanna was not only able to be driven, Kidipombo. If you look at the rain queens, Pomojaji, if you look at the rituals that we as Africans did for Pula, where it would be virgins who need to, uh, they would do what, the modern day version of what we call um, relay. But I just talk or the sokwani, but pass it and the leo virgins. But I become a strati, well, not a strati, momutsi. And the boys go, go tabbing. By you look at a nonyan, I actually forgot what it is, but I forgot gas so true, what is it? But it's actually the pelican. Nibaru mwa kyo kosi, or a kosi khadi, I believe. Um, no, kosi it would be, because with Queen Mojaji, it was, with, with the rain queen, it was different. But by Nibaru mwa kyo kosi, the boys. Kore bailo palama taba. And then, bailo tsaya, seba si rumi wang, out of the nest of the pelican. And as they come back, and these virgins, there would be rain. So, rain, even from a scientific point of view, is condensation. King Pula. Pula ke meti alowate, ladi nuka. Anyolo khang, anyolo swa ke litsaati, limutsheso, after akopana ko maru, aimela maru, awa ki Pula. So, Pula actually, he recycled seawater. So again, Pula would be able to attract the Mlozi. Right. Munga meti hore apile. Ase hore upila in the body of water. Kale bakala hore ibitwa. Ibitwa, libitwa le wadle. Ore nuka. No. Munga meti is a spirit. So mungu na ling meti. Munga meti should be present. And... For some places, and most of South Africa is like that. More so with the rain queens, right? The only river was at Aya Crocodile River. Um, what happens now is now Pula Eo through condensation. So, Kyo Munga Miti Anungwatla as Pula. Kyo Munga Miti Utla as. Um, um, meter nuka is meter lowat, and then we further extended that now. Um, Kwabana Lidi Springs, Didiba, meter to Hankamutlas Hamits, Kakoma Haching, Honali Dinukan, Takamutlas Hamaha. Right, call them boreholes today, right? The boreholes today, um, which is. I would think where our initial water sources started, that well, yamit apaka manhape, mungamit, right? Um, and then finally, rubero kono rwa bulele mo pumpung. So meti abulelo mo pumpung. I believe it's where Badimu are saying or mungamit is saying. I'll come to where you are. After all, he's underwater. Right? Um, I see, I see, um, Gogo Daphne asking me, or by civility, a dipompo savone di hala lelana. Ah, a di hala lel. Right? A di hala lel. Pompo yo ne hain, I hala lel. Pompo it's on a lily sailor. It's an evolution. It's, 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 it's how we've progressed to live today. Pompo it's on a savanna. Right? Savanna will never be mkumbuti. However, because there is a body of water, then some people, they started to call the kereketa boni di kereketa manyeloi. Linyeloi la saint. Linyeloi la postol. Linyeloi la zayon. Linyeloi la la... Yeah, those are the three. Linyeluila bo postola, la bo saint, la bo zayon. Right. Bo 12 apostles libone, inti libo postola, mixed up libo saint. 
boshembe would be purely in the lady apparent process so you so killing you really let's amazing see tunya 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 setting so let you work in it got a pillar leak or no bait so baptism right that is why some of us really already swim pool the swimming pool is interesting to motor room came on your loy as a bit and indoors came on a meeting that you summon indoors and what you do because munga meetsi happen now we say killing your loy ibler ricky hosana ibler ricky moyo halalelang what we do a coco daphne reza baby lia no remobita kama bito rapela rebel rinsa mangwalo ma baby ling reza rikono fata meetsi that is why you hear go post on the barbana lady deep right then we take the depiction of who Mungameti is, and we applied Mungameti directly to what the Holy Spirit and what uh, Jesus would be. And that's how we manage what we must apply the Mosaic law. Because in the Gaskoa, Mudimu Uiwan, but in, in the Bible, Mudimu presents um, many qualities, by the way, many faces, many names, right? That, okay, they will say, you know, Jehovah Shalom, whatever, whatever. Many names signaling out his attributes, right? However, Gasito, those very many names are assigned to elements. Mudimu wa meetsi, right? Mudimu wa ko ko di tabi. Then reza the Bible, and we have aligned that, and we have said, Munga meetsi basically is Hosanna, is Hallelujah. So. Dikereketse, what they've done then is that now, save it to the practice of healing with water. I think it was also mainly to move away from Ubungo Mabesintu and to be able to conceal what um, they are doing. Um, then, what they then started to do was to take the colors to symbolize differentiations of how Mungamiti functions. Today, the only Bungoma or Bungaka Bobo Sanse will connect a Hulu Liko meeting, Kibungaka Bastos. They use the Bise White, the shades of blue and shades of yellow or orange. Right. Um, um, so that yellow would be badimba bone baditaba leba kometsi right um they still practice that through their culture even but most of what the churches did to sort of shield hide cover bunga kaba bone they started to have colors green kidinoka blue kimetsi alo water body of water and then white kilo water straight right so that's what they did they are symbolic of the type of way in which Badimu Barona have given us Kuberiki Samits. Khanti, like I'm saying, Badimu Barona di blue, Khanti, Kimoya Wabu Postol. Right. They do go Kunuki in Hahodu, but Moya Wabu Postol has got a lot of balodzi. Right. Clear audience, audible spirits right more than i think more than profit uh, right wounds baba apostola and that is why you would hear body cp body in body kupu they need that and just like uh abangoma bangoma bachetla maluzi abo niko apostola kwiti wa dress ke kutletla that thing okay by the way for those that don't know how to kutletla what that is kutletla is like vigorous movement to sort of shake up your lozi type of thing or to train your body to align the lozi right and then go up to have apostles um or any church mobile number para white the fail you must know or a bunzi they're aligning with the spirits pure spirits marine spirits but also relying mainly on stunya and stunya is basically it can be exercised mainly through prayers 
uh, lokubina, right? Um, and meditation. So bunti batone, that's what they rely on. And then Zionist as well would be uh, Dinogana. Now, if you look at your Zionist uh, prophetic gifts, and this I want you guys to, to be cognizant of. Even today, most of them, they still use wooden sticks. Mare, walking sticks, wooden ones. Um, they use many color uh, uh, wools. Dimpitane tabone would be multicolored. Uh, so this would be your red, your green, your blues, and whatever. Think about it. Um, by the way, even Abongamwe will tell you this. Your zgupu, you're supposed to normally have it made from the skin of your own goat or cow. Yeah, graduation. So zgupu salekalo ko Zion. If you think about it, um, this is why I was saying Zionist gifts are mainly like the first form of Ubungoma transformed into Sprofit. And maybe they have not modernized Sprofit to Hakul. They still make use of Diwasho. They still make use of Ukukita in a way, right? Um, it's just that the well, some by its address and that, um, but if you look at the elements, even the Uluza when it's a di color color, the Uluza they're telling you, or now it goes back to the color color beads, sea spirits, marine spirits, um, 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 da we seen to which is red, uh, healing with plants, green, uh, blue, prophetic seawater, um, yellow, ilkozila sentabeni, uh, white is tunya. Bazayoni and people with Zionist gifts, they take on the earliest form. They take on the first form of Bo Prophet. It's not uncommon for Umfundi Suase Zayoni to still have a Makobongo. I don't know if they do, but it makes sense to me for them to do that. Um, it's not uncommon for Um Zayoni to have a Mabai. Right? And then you move into your more apostolic... Um, support of it which is what i've got now you know um blue now this is now merging more into your more modern now bonnie they are more maybe bible not even more bible based they're more into the old and the new testament zionist i think is more towards mosaic law applied with isintu uh blue because it's a blue support of it supposed dollar um, it's still bungaka, but now, kibungaka or now it's more applied to to the revelations and the adaptations of Jesus Christ. Uh but I would like to say that um Bunti Babone they don't really put on beads. But if you think about the word Bapostori from the Zimbabwean ladies and gents coming down you would almost automatically assume because Zimbabwe is not very far Kobotswana. You would assume that even Setswana would, would be very much connected to that type of faith where they are praying and doing their own things. Right. Um by the way. Right. Um this is just really a, an interpretation on Ilosi applied in the bible however if usheba supposed to libone but there is a means right they would also use the washo now this is where your indian dao spirits would come in and your white and our spirits would come in right but we use the washo and um milk and such things milk but you holy ash the ing ing ingredients you know supposed to listen listen i would like to say and i could be wrong but um, for me, suppose that it made sense for my Mutswana Ndao spirit because she showed me Horekamu Nazareta wa kawa which is o blue. Lisipika saka sisi white. 
sentle sentle ke ne ke apere le toitse right and before that came ke ne ka fiwa le tsela la qhaka impangela e blue and white why because even le ka se tswana the tswana traditional cloth ke qhaka so ha ne ke fiwa and gift ya se postola ya di bata tse di tse you know tsa tsipi le le re la tsipi a silver staff or a golden staff um it made sense to me um from an ancestral point of view like a culture point of view a cultural point of view because my grandmother wa mo postola e ne e le motswana as well right so she was basically saying i'm taking my traditional clothing and i'm just converting that to bungaka for you right um but listen on this post lege ke di bata tseo and you still use the bible um go hlono fatsa and things like that they do that right tuku it's we i think it's universal like i said for most people baba na leng di prophetic gifts and then okay then you move into what i call them the pure pure and our spirits pure let's let's say for lack of a better term pure white in our spirits or let's say is to you are affected purely by in our spirits and this would be your churches where they dress mainly in white most of those churches have a para baba para white they fail they don't recognize um badi um if they do bo dilotsa setso ba etsa bo tswala fela go gae most of the time they don't really make the sacrifices they are more towards the new testament prophet so this would be prophet to that is advanced um a lot past ubungoma right into what you would call a uh, purity state into prayer of the holy spirit and i know i've had a few readings with people where i say when are you a white white prophet and i think they don't get it um these people are able to pray by the moon ka dituku some light candles well candle is pretty much good to 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 do right but most of them they don't make offerings um of slaughtered animals i have seen a pure white prophet who came to tusa by me and she was given an arabic rug as a place from some i um, uh, i i i i i couldn't well, i was i was very happy for her. i mean arabic rug wow all right koko le rato ish le na ke bona ntse ke di buang dia confuse but now um you dreaming of water we would have to go into it like we'd have to go into it like go talk or now what are the details around that because that'll tell me where your gift is based and that type of thing right monitoring we look at media ke media yang what is the people around you wearing with ang you know dreams dreams um please try to um please try go go le rato ne gore maybe on the side or whatever was amon pontsa gore like what was the dream about i would need a little bit more than you dreaming of water <laughs> All right, so Baba Parang White, yay, Baba Parang White, back in Makola, right? Um, some of them they don't need to to slaughter. Some of them they ask um, and make prayers, and they make their offering with fruits, sweets, vegetables, cooked meat cook meat right or store bought meat um and like i'm saying i did not know there was such until i had a twasa who well yene bo go go ba gare they gave her the money so she could buy an arabic rug right but one of the things that she had to do was her gift gore re pagamise um no slaughtering of blood was required whatsoever actually we were told not to do it and instead of giving Uchwala what she did was give red wine right so this was okay prophet that we know for now is 99% bible based right and 
Baba Joalo, like I'm saying, Bunti Baboni, it's in their prayers and their meditation and their vocations to God, um, the Holy Spirit, that they, that Tunya Sabona Sapaham. Right. Now I know that Tuwako Jehovah's Witness are going to kill me. But every time I think of Lingilui La Jehovah's Witness, and you even look at the way that they expedite or they express their doctrine, uh, I would put them in the category, yeah, but to Bainu Hore, Banali the pure, pure prophetic spirits. They believe in prayer, um, in the vocation to Jehovah's to Jehovah God. They do not want any part in any ancestral things, right? Um, and like I'm saying, you know, at first, as I was like learning the, the prophetic gifts of South Africa, I always used to think, but you know, why? But you look at the way that they go in house to house and they do their ministry, um, that to them, they are following a biblical instruction, go out and teach the word of God to the nations, right? So, and like I said earlier on, it's to take any physical action, right, to be able to raise your spirit. So, by the way, by walking in house to house, right, and teach um, what they know of Jehovah God. Right. They also have uh Ingelosi Lesonto Labo and I know that they don't even call that. They don't even they don't even believe in that. But every church, um, the doctrine in which it has been written or the interpretation of the Bible, every church has got an inspiration, a spiritual inspiration, right, coming from the angels of God to come and bestow to the founders of these churches. That's basically what it is. Right. So I would say Liberikisa Mdao Ashua a lot. Right. Which is strictly apply what you read in the Bible. Let that be that. And I know it sounds very uncommon, but like I'm saying, it was one of the churches that I, I studied um uh indirectly. Uh it's one of the churches that I studied indirectly. Um and I've I always found them very interesting. So and by the way, Libonet, they've got baptism. Baptism is important and you do it willingly. You make a choice out of it. So already that speaks to Umnigazi. Already, right? Um, Umnigazi in a pool, just like a St. John. Manilia St. John, Khangata, you would dream of a swimming pool. Um, where you dream, okay, in a swimming pool, either to swim or to be baptized, right? Uh, the people who are saying, well, they dream of Duku Etsweu, it's mainly that you've got a prophetic gift what a prophetic gift but now so uh back to the dreams where i was saying that uh people when when you go into communion uh, you would dream of yourself wearing a wedding dress however in the bible also um moses whenever he came down from gotabing so whenever moses went he would come back come down i can tell you see Right, so again, Duku Etsweu would be Lisira, a state of divinity. Um, I said if you look at the African gods, particularly the Orishas, um, even Gastrosa, uh, if you look at most of the African gods, Dickens, the depictions are always of them with beads covering their faces. It has always been an African doctrine that whatever that is sacred, whatever that is holy is a secret all right um hey i said to wait till you well all right now what i want to speak about and this is very important all right i'm just moving off the topic a bit so what is hotwasa through your dreams i'm just going to begin this and hopefully next week will continue you know you hear people naked twice through my dreams uh some 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 um hey definitely you're disturbing me wait again some healers will say it's impossible uh but you're fake um some of us say yes we can uh and some of us claim to still do it and what are the dangers 
and what's the middle ground, all right? Let me say this. Everybody with a spiritual gift, your dozi will always direct you. Either it's where to go or what your next move is through your dreams, right? Your dreams tell you um, the direction that your gift is going to go. Now, whether you, 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 you've been shown or you think you're going to go a pathway or not, it is important to keep a dream journal. Because a dream journal will tell your gobela where you're going, if obonsi or where to go, what to do for you. Every healer, badimu bachare, kibone bo gobela bachare pili, right? So in your dream journal, what you guys are not aware of, um, and that's why sometimes I'm a bit wary to do the dream interpretations. And you guys should be too. Don't be in a rush to have every dream that you dream interpreted. Because now you must remember that the dream will be interpreted according to the, to the healer's own wisdom and experience. Right? Not always what the message is. Some dreams are a continuation of a previous dream. Some dreams are the foundation of a next dream. So, in isolation. Not until only your own intuition, right? So, when you're gifted, write your dreams down. So, actually, However, you will go to a gobela who's supposed to be your helper to go and help you with certain things. Okay, I've seen this happen. Some people bata muna to paramisa stunya. Some they come or give up one city taola and mapulu. Some come for that. It's, people come for different reasons, muna, right? Others come and see my husband umkulu because he needs got ancestral spirits, right? Abanye, we are finishing off. Abanye, we are starting out, right? They will show you to go to Lerato. Now, one thing I've, I've picked up, I don't know if this is true for all the healers, but what I found out on my journey was that Kinekiswa to many different people. So it's like I would go here to go and acquire this skill. that, um, sorry, Kekhanzete that healer, do what I can, and whenever I found myself overstaying my welcome, so what, what I started to do on my journey was that or as I go if they say, okay, fine, I would just go and visit Kopostola and see if I like it. Right. Um, and then if I like it, go there a few more times, right? And as the dreams come and whatever, okay, fine, enjoy, I want to enjoy it, I go. Most of the time, I would never be, I would never go to Postola three times, more than three times in a row. I would end up going to Zion. And then I go to St. John. Like, I've been everywhere. Right. So sometimes when you go, also go to Don't go there, I think, with the hope that this is your Messiah. We must really try to kill a colonizer's mindset. I'm sorry, and I want you guys to listen to this in context. Let us not apply a religion mindset to Bungaka. It is dangerous and it is a problem. Right? Let us not apply a colonizer's mindset. Don't go to your gobela looking for a Jesus. Don't go to your gobela looking for a savior. Right? Try by all means to trust your dreams and keep on writing them down. Um, I learned to interpret dreams. No one taught me to. Why? Because everybody that I'd ever that I went to at a particular period in time was basically evil. It was just the saddest thing. Uh, there was a time when I was blocked from even going kodi king. I was blocked from going kodi king kilo kilo I was blocked from everything. Right. Um, and I was forced to learn to understand my own dreams. So all of this is about patience. Facebook teachings, take what you need. Don't take what you don't need. 
even though we are teaching you guys on Facebook, Patlan, if something yahu yahu ngwapa in your mind, Patlan, ask your dozi is this person telling the truth about that? Because most of the answers to some of the things that you are wondering, Radibua in passing, and there's many sources. You know, um, and if you can start to piece the piece the pieces of your puzzle from teachings, right? However, um, eventually when you will need someone to help you, whether it's been Kobela or Kimamruti or whoever, how we you must know that now we're not what's hands we only that inner strength built and that inner faith mobadi mo. Hangata if you go all the blind sighted, but look good. But look good. And it's going to be painful. And then tomorrow it'll be like, Gobela or Sensei, your life. However, but Dimu allow you to go through that process. Yahore Mutomo, Aho, 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 Baho Thickeniza, they're supposed to go to Shamin. They're supposed to. Right? Baho Thickeniza, because now they're there to shake you up and make you realize that this is not your mother's house. Let me give you guys a very interesting. Hey, Mama Kabila, she was shocked when I told her that I did this. I had a gogo uh, a month back. Um, and it was so interesting. She was coming here for Lutzaretza's profit, Obungaka, blah, blah. Um, so in general, na my people showed me to do things at a short period of time. It's it's it's, it's a long story. And, we were, you know, she, I was getting her geared up with her uh, spiritual work. And the main thing, for me, tapelo, loko bina. Like, you, you better sing. I get so but now I want to hear you making noise in my tumba. Right? And I think she was not socialized to that. It's it's like that for most of us. You know, when we start this journey, we're still a bit shy and now we can't sing. And I remember one night, um, Ali Biza Rappel. Okay, Ribin Ninya and Anika. I wonder now, she's not getting that oomph. This thing, Ekamo Harakaha, is not coming out. It's not. It was a little book. Yeah, now she's not being broken down. She's holding on to the ego. Yahore, if she sings badly, what will I think? Right. And I tried to tell her, listen, I don't care what you sing. Like, I want you to scream if you need to. Right. But I need to hear you because I know when you are singing from the spirit. And I know our rappella from the spirit. Ah. So, Gogo Adi again. I think she's still struggling with her ego and what, what, what. what? While she was praying, I took Umuti. I think it was Uvu Mumthopi. I took Umuti and I, and I ground it up in my hand as she's praying. And when she said, Amen, because we're up two minutes, I blew that Muti into her face. And I said to her, that Gogo's face turned white. Right. But what I was trying to do was show her that, A, I'm not her mom. I'm not her Rosie. She should trust her intuition. She should let this thing from within her break free. And she should never consider what I think. Because her Rosies have equipped her. Her Rosies have given her the money. To come as a twasa gimi. So for her closes, I'm just a transaction. Right? And if I don't deliver on my goods, then the transaction was a weak one. And I must go back and report to my Rosuguti. When's I yell in? So koko amangal. You're gonna wash my underwear for the next two months. Nasem seven zin awhambi. You won't. Gogo started shaking. Yo, I can't trust the Gogo. She was crying. Not to go. In terms of keep her, you can't as if you can keep Only your God, only your Rosie will keep, will take you out. Because me now, I've got no real reason to have any good intentions for you. And I want you guys to know this. Right? Um, and what I was trying to do was 
get her to be as emotionally independent as possible and to know that the gift is not coming from me and i want you guys as you watch these videos to know that right whatever that you watch us teaching you can do this if not better it doesn't matter what you know i did not even dream before i became a prophet so Gogo started shaking. Yo, wakalu Gogo, ngatiao pumina. I want you to pray. You're going to pray only when you get out of here. And it's because A, I had a short period of time. Like I said, Mina, my people, people who come here, they come here for a very short period of time. And B, I wanted her, I wanted to break this inner thing. And unfortunately, I learned from my Gobela, who was a witch, Uktandaza. Can I tell you, um, in two days, it was a complete turnaround. Gogo started to pray and cry and weep to her Lozi to say, I am here because of you guys. Get me out. Get me out and get me out alive. And that is exactly what I wanted her to do. So what I'm trying to say is, even Abu Kobela, the, the cruel ones, they don't do it with the mindset that I had, that they're trying to push you. But the lesson is one. Always the result is one. That they should push you to a point where you feel like you're going to break. And you must. So that the true you can emerge. That Gogo spent a week in my house. And it was like a langchelukuti. Because I don't know. They're private. They want to do their own thing. She was gone and a week later, a week, she spent seven days in my house. A week later, she said to me, Nya vibrate from nowhere. And I said, good. So the point is, it was done, right? So you guys must be careful. Some people are not doing it for you. You know, on this journey, trust it was like, if you can be trained or get help, most of us get help. From someone not trained i honestly don't believe in starting your gift from a to z with one person i have had trusters who come here but to pagamisa one thing bahambe and they get shown their own gobelas and i even say to them i'm going to check your gobela to be are you going to the right place right because they are not supposed to be replicas of me they are not supposed to be bolerato right they are here for their unique thing right so be careful right did his Facebook um, um, come to my Dumba type of thing, right? Just be careful, guys. Uh, but if you're not sure about anything, just pray. Just pray, right? Um, I'm going to teach on Nagatsupe next week. Mark, I the topic of gays and lesbians and why they, are why they are spiritual. I think let's do that because there are a lot of LGBTQI plus members that are spiritual. And I think they are struggling as well. So we're going to do this and then we're going to be wrapping up the water spirits thing and all of that. Um, so I'm 10 minutes out of the way. Togozani. Um, uh, Togozani. And have a great night. Um, today there was, there was just a lot of things. Again, you know, always my teachings are... They, they don't make sense. They don't give you, um, they don't give you step by step. I know that, right? Um, but it's because I'm still laying the foundation for a lot of teachings. Our teachings are going to get deeper, by the way. They're going to get crazy deep. You guys are going to realize what spirituality is like, is like a maze, right? So try to catch up. Try to read where you can. If you need to watch past videos, please do that. Thank you guys so much for your support and your love. Um... And for sharing, keep sharing. Uh, thank you guys so much. Togozan, have a great night.